The searing is acoustically treated with 1000 GSM polyfiber foam and covered with perforated sheets so that the sound gets absorbed easily. This furniture is entirely custom made using mahogany. Since I am using an USD projector, the dimension of the table was very much important for me. I draw the complete design for my table and build it with mahogany wood. Now look at the Atmos speakers. These are prime elevation speakers from SVS. In my opinion, this is the best speakers to be used for Atmos. The front stage power amplifier is connected by XLR cables with the processor and the remaining channels pre-outs are connected using why online UPS is because online UPS is full time running from battery so that the output will be 230 or 120 volt constant with pure sine wave waveform. Quality of the audio and video will be much better than the usual 15 lakhs home theater built by the so-called professionals. Hey guys, welcome back to Home Theater Enthusiast. So today I'm gonna give you my home theater tour which will include the room setup, details on the equipment I have used and the approximate cost. This video may be a little longer when compared to my usual uploads. So I will split this video in 7 chapters. The room and the acoustics, the equipment rack and the recliner, the speakers and its configuration, the audio video equipments, the connectivity and cable management, the protection for the sensitive equipments and the approximate cost for the entire home theater setup. So let's get to it. Before starting let me clear one thing. I was mainly focused on high quality equipments more than the theater ambience. That's why I just did a very low budget acoustic treatment but it is very effective and there is no noticeable reflection in the room. I set up my home theater in the first floor living room, not in a dedicated room. So if you guys have similar situation of not having a dedicated room for setting up your home theater, this video is gonna help you understand how to build it in your living room. And as a disclaimer, I would like to say one thing, that I have messed up with the speaker placement, especially at the back side, because of the room shape and base constraints. So please keep it in mind. I did all the acoustic work myself, of course with the help of appropriate laborers. Starting from the furniture itself, all things are custom made. Acoustic work was charging heavily by the guys who build home theatres here. So I thought of doing it myself, so that I could complete the acoustic work for the floor, ceiling and wall within my budget. And that worked perfectly well. Because I could complete the entire acoustic work for a low budget, less than 60,000 Indian rupees. But the people were asking for 2-3 to three lakhs for the same. I did a separate video on the acoustic works to convert my living room to home theatre. I will provide the link for the full video in the description below. If you want more details, please check it out. So let's start from the room and the acoustics. So this is how it looks like from the outside. You can see the living room is partitioned using cement board from outside and acoustic materials from inside. Let's go inside. Sorry for the video quality, it's little dark here, I have given some reading lights as well, so that we can utilize this room for reading as well. Let's switch on the lights, there are 4 white lights and 8 small warm LEDs with a purple LED strip hidden inside the cove design. The screen is positioned directly opposite to the door. There are 5 doors in this small room. I think this will be the smallest home theater with most number of doors. The room has a dimension of 10 feet width and almost 12 feet length. And both sides have different length because of the living room shape. The ceiling is acoustically treated with 1000 GSM polyfiber foam and covered with perforated sheets so that the sound gets absorbed easily. Now come to the floor. The floor has two layers. The bottom layer is 12 mm foam underlay and on top of it we have the acoustic carpet. Then comes the wall acoustics. These are all custom made acoustic panels with around 2 inch thickness. But I will suggest if you have enough space go for 4 inch panels. The panel is built using wood frame filled with 1000 GSM polyfiber foam and wrapped with acoustic transparent fabric. For detailed video on how to create this panel check out the link in the description. The back wall is built using cement board outside and the same perforated sheet inside and filled with polyfiber foam in between. The front two corners are fitted with custom made base strap with polyfiber foam of a thickness of around 1 feet and is closed temporarily by gypsum board because I had some shortage of small size perforated sheet at that time. But I will recommend using perforated sheet if you are going for similar base strap. 
So that's all from the acoustic side. Let's move to the next topic. Let's look at my equipment furniture. This furniture is entirely custom made using mahogany. Since I am using an UST projector, the dimension of the table was very much important for me. I draw the complete design for my table and build it with mahogany wood with the help of a carpenter. My goal was to keep all my equipments including the UST projectors on the same table without seeing any cables outside. All the cables were running behind this furniture. My processor is placed at the left side and the right side you can see my Basex A7 and Nijia 4K projector is located at the center. Below the processor you can see Emotiva XPA3. The center channel speaker placement is a little tricky if you are using a USD projector. I know this is not the perfect position for a central channel. The constraints I had forced me to place it here. But don't worry, the SPS Ultra Center is performing well even in this position. And finally the right side has some shelves that can be used for storage. Also the left side cabinet has two exhaust fans at the back side to provide enough air circulation for my XPA3. This is the recliner. I am using a two seat manual recliner. The recliner has a cup holder and a storage space at the center. I kept all my remote control here. Now let's move to speakers and its configuration. I have 11 channel speaker setup with 7.1.4 Atmos configuration. The front stage is much powerful when compared to the surrounds and Atmos channels. That is how you can optimize your cost for effective performance. These are Rebel Concerta F36 cover speakers which has three 6.5 inch drivers for bass and mid frequencies and a 1 inch aluminium tutor. It can handle up to 200 watts power, 91 dB sensitivity is very decent. I am not going deep into these specs because I have already did separate videos for most of these equipments. Please check out my channel for more detailed reviews. Next is the center channel. This is the most important speaker of your home theater system. Be very careful while choosing a center channel. A good center channel will produce minute details in the dialogues with intended emotions. And this is the speaker which is going to work most of the time while watching a movie. That's why I went with SVS Ultra Center, the flagship center channel from SVS. And I am very much satisfied with its performance. This is a three-way speaker which means it has separate drivers for high, mid and low frequencies. It has a 1-inch aluminium dome tutor with 4-inch mid-range drivers and two 6.5-inch bass drivers. It has a sensitivity of 87 dB. This is a ported speaker. Since I kept it inside the cabinet, I have to plug the port to reduce the boominess and it does the job. Also always keep your center channel at the ear level. At least try to position it towards the ear level. Now let's look at the surround speakers. Both my side and back surround uses the same Wafdale WHDFS bipole speaker. Let me clear one thing. I am not a fan of bipole speakers. But why I used it here is only because of its shape and size. It's very much suited for small rooms. If I place a normal speaker at the back side, I can't even walk around my recliners. These are 6 ohm speakers with one bass driver and one tweeter at each side. Also, it can handle up to 200 watts power with a sensitivity of 86 dB. Forget about the speaker positioning at the back side. There was no other options available for me. Now look at the Atmos speakers. These are prime elevation speakers from SVS. In my opinion, this is the best speakers to be used for Atmos. Also, it is very much flexible so that you can fix it any way you want. Don't worry about the 4 inch drivers in the speaker. It will outperform most of your ceiling speakers. There are multiple ways to fix Atmos speakers. I use the front height and back height option and it gives very immersive height sound effect. I won't recommend to use Atmos enabled up firing speakers or 6 or 8 inch ceiling speakers in this budget range because the speaker cabinet has very much to contribute with the sound quality. I use 4 prime elevation speaker which can handle 150 watts at 8 ohms with a sensitivity of 87 dB. It uses a 1 inch aluminium dome tutor with 4.5 inch mid range driver. Now comes the main guy, the subwoofer. This is another very important part of the home theater because this is the one who produces all your bass frequencies. That's why I went with another flagship model from SVS, the SB16 Ultra, the giant 16 inch subwoofer. It can go even below 20 Hz. It can handle a continuous power of 1500 watts RMS and a 5000 watts peak dynamic power. For more detailed videos on each of these equipments, please check out my channel for previous uploads and also I will provide the links in the description. So that's all about the speaker setup. Now let's move to the other equipment details. So we'll start with the projector. I'm using Mijia 4K Ultra Short Throw Projector which is from the MI family. It is a native 4K projector with HDR support. This projector uses ALPD display technology. 
it has a brightness of 1500 ansi lumens and 25000 hours of lamp life the screen i have used is 100 inch alr pet crystal screen from xy screen since it is a gray screen and the bezels are very small we just feel it like a big tv on the wall I will definitely recommend this screen for USD projectors. This screen won't reflect ambient light so that we can even watch it with some ambient lights on. Now comes the processor. This is the Marantz AV7705 which support all the latest soundtrack like DTSX, Dolby Atmos and Oro 3D. Since it is a processor, it won't have a power amplifier built in which means we need external power amplifier for all the channels. This is a 11.2 channel AV processor. and i have used all the 11 channels in a 7.1.4 configuration i have two power amplifiers both are from the brand emotiva the front three channels left right and center is powered by the emotiva xpa3 which can deliver 275 watts output per channel and it has a balanced connectivity as well so that we can use xlr cables to connect xpa from the av7705 The remaining channels are powered by the Emotiva Basex A7, the second generation Basex power amplifier which got released in 2021. It can produce 90 watts RMS in all of its 7 channels. Since my equipment got changed frequently, I'm currently running a 6.1.4 configuration. Earlier I was using Emotiva Basex 800 which was an 8 channel amplifier. I'm not going deep into any of this equipment. I'm using Nvidia Shield TV Pro as my media player for playback. It supports both 4K HDR and lossless Atmos format. This is the best product available in the market even in 2022 which has all this support. Even latest versions of Fire TV Stick 4K or Apple TV won't support lossless Atmos format. Also the device is very powerful so that you won't feel any lags in the UI. I have an 8TB NAS in my local network, the WD MyCloud EX2 Ultra. which is shared across the devices using my SUS router so that you can stream local contents in any of your devices like mobile tablet tv or the nvidia shield from anywhere in the network i am using plex media server for the content sharing and for playback i use kodi or plex media players so i think i have covered all the equipments now let's move to the connectivity and cable management most of the speaker cables are from amazon basics But for the front stage speakers I have used DAC speaker cables and both are 14 gauges. The front stage power amplifier is connected by XLR cables with the processor and the remaining channels preouts are connected using Amazon Basics RCA cables with the Emotiva Basics A7. The SVS SB16 Ultra subwoofer is connected to the processor using XLR cables. Nvidia Shield to the processor and the processor video out to the projector both uses the latest HDMI 2.1 cables. and all the equipment uses the default power cables which is provided by the manufacturer that's all about the connectivity the cable management is not that good but i have used a 4 inch pvc pipe behind the furniture to run most of my cables that helps to conceal it from the outside but there are more to do i will update once i did it in a better way now let's talk about the protection for the sensitive equipments all the sensitive equipments like media player processor and projector are connected to my APC online UPS. This is a 1 kV online UPS with built-in battery support. But I will suggest to use all the electronic equipments connected to an online UPS for better life protection and performance. Why online UPS is because online UPS is full time running from battery so that the output will be 230 or 120 volt constant with pure sine wave waveform. You don't need to worry about the external power supply. Also it has built in lightning and surge protection. I will be moving to the more powerful 3 kV online UPS soon. I will create a separate video once I upgraded the same. Now let's talk about the approximate cost. Let's discuss about the amount I spent for this theater setup. I didn't invest much for the acoustics and design as you know I did it myself and I was able to complete all the acoustics and room partitioning work by less than 1 lakh Indian rupees. 1.5 lakh spent for the surround and atmosphere speakers. The center channel, front left and right speaker cost 2.5 lakhs. Around 2.5 lakhs for the subwoofers too. The projector and the screen cost another 2.5 lakhs. The processor, the amplifier cost a total of 4 lakhs. The furniture and the recliner cost 1 lakh. Then the UPS and surge protector cost will sum up to around 30k. 
So a total of 15 lakhs plus is the cost for the entire home theater. But the good thing is that out of the 15 lakhs, 14 lakhs were spent for the equipment itself. So the quality of the audio and video will be much better than the usual 15 lakhs home theater built by the professionals. So that's all from my side today. Thank you and see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed the video. For any queries or suggestions, please comment below. And for more such videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you and see you in the next video.